And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the light of one of them by tomorrow about this time. She sent out a threat saying, by this time tomorrow, Elijah, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to shut you down. You're around here calling fire from heaven, doing all kinds of supernatural stuff. But I got something for you. She said, I'm going to cut you down by this time tomorrow. And when he saw that, he arose. Watch Elijah. When he saw he rose and ran. <laughs> How's the anointed man of God going to run after that? He done called fire. Now you're running. He went for his life. Then he came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went the day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree and requested for himself that I may die. He said, I want to die. And he said, it's enough now, O oh Lord. I'm tired of the fighting. I'm tired of the warfare. I'm tired to take my life. Um, uh, for I am not better than not my father. It's just I'm so weary of well-doing. Has anybody ever been there before? Tell the truth. Say something. Talk back to me. But he came to came and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I, I'm the only one left doing the will of the Lord. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord and they behold pass by and a great strong wind rent the mountain and break it into pieces and rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in all of that noise he wasn't in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire came so there was wind there was a shaking there was an earthquake and there was fire but the Lord was not even in the fire and after that the fire a still small voice came and settled his mind and settled his spirit all he needed was a small voice from within to calm him down I'm going to go to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 you know this let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus Jesus. Do me a favor and tell about seven people around you. Tell them you got to get your head in the game. Tell them you got to get your head. Let this mind be in you, which was all. They, 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 they don't got it. They, they didn't get it. Go to somebody else. I said, tell seven people, tell them you got to get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. You got all this anointing, but you still got to work on your mind. You got all this gift on, on you. You got all this anointing in you. You got a prophetic word, but you still need help with your mind. You still deal with fear every now and then. You still deal with anxiety every now and then. You still deal with frustration every now and then. You still want to cuss somebody out every now and then. I need a church up. I can't preach to fake people today. Y'all better give me the real folks say amen up in here. I need God to work on my mind. Tell somebody tell them get your mind right. Get your mind right. Uh, I won't be long. It's NBA Sunday. So I'm going in today talking about the NBA. But in order for you to receive, you may be seated this message today, you're going to have to use your imagination. In order for you to capture this and grasp this word with your spirit, you're going to have to use your imagination. Imagination. I want you to imagine uh, you're, you're on a basketball team and you made it all season. You worked hard and you've been fighting and you've been pressing. You went through injuries. You came back. You went through war. Warfare, you came back. The enemy tried to hurt you, but you came back. And now you made it to the playoffs. Come on, somebody. And you helped. You're on your way to the championship. Come. Even though you've gone through a whole lot of warfare, a whole lot of bumps and bruises, because you pressed in, you still put yourself in a position to win. I really want to prophesy to somebody in here and tell you that the Lord told me to tell you today 
that you are in a position to win. When you're feeling that pain and that aggravation and that frustration, come on somebody, that's God just trying to push you and get you ready, come on, for your win. There's a big win coming. Some of y'all don't even got it, but somebody who caught this with your spirit, I'm telling you, you're going to win the championship up in here. And you weren't made for failure, but you were made for victory. Look at somebody tell them, I already got the victory. I, I, I wish I tell, tell somebody else, I already got the victory. It's just only a matter of time. And I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I'm going to get up and I'm going to shout right now. And tell them, if you don't want to shout, I'll dance all over your Louis Vuitton shoes. Tell them, I'm on my way to the win. And I got to act like I'm on my way to victory. All the vic victorious people, lift your voice and shout hallelujah up in here. Come on, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So, 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 so you're headed to the championship. And our squad, you're on a basketball team. And our squad is called, let's give us a cool name, the Hill City uh, uh, Soldiers, the what? Conquerors. What your, give, give me a name. We're, we're the Hill City what? Uh, no, we're not the Lakers. No, we're Hill City. We, we ain't the Clippers. Come on, we ain't getting clipped off of nothing. We ain't on no, come on. We ain't, the, maybe the Rock, Hill City Rockets. We taking off. Come on. Huh? Uh, what? <laughs> Hill City Saints. The Hill City Saints. All the Hill City Saints make some noise up in here. <laughs> I said, make some scream in your neighbor's face. If you was at a basketball game, how about we get the wave going? All Hill City Saints. Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Let's get the wave going. Hill City Saints, y'all start the wave. Make some noise. Oh, so y'all ain't never been to a basketball game? Y'all done messed up the way. Let's start over here. Hill City Saints, make some noise! <laughs> Listen, listen, but our squad, listen, our team is owned by God himself. Come on, but we have an enemy. We have an enemy called the, the, the devils. That's what we're going to call them, the devils. And Satan is their owner, but both teams are playing for souls. Anybody out here winning souls for the kingdom of God? Amen. We're, we're playing to win souls, and the devils are out to take souls. We're not playing for a ring but we're playing for a crown. How many is going to fight until you get your crown? And I want you to see your life, your everyday life, like a court. It's on a court, a basketball court. But on this court, there are strategic devils set up to try to block you from reaching your goal. I wish I had a crazy church. Y'all need. I told you you're going to need your imagination. You got a team that's strong, standing there, huffing and puffing and trying to intimidate you, but I believe that some crazy Hill City saints that, that ain't afraid of nobody's faces. Come on, somebody. You don't care what they say about you. They can try to lie on you. They can kind of come up. They can try to back you up. But how many gonna be like David up in here and say, I ain't gonna back up? Somebody just shout hallelujah up in here. But their team, listen, the devils are known for their offense. And we are known for our defense. He's known for his offense. He said, think it not strange. The fire trials that's going to always come at you because you have an anointing on your life. Uh, Satan is going to and fro throughout the earth seeking whom he may devour, who he can block, who he can stop. Come on somebody shout hallelujah. He's also come to steal, kill and destroy. Uh, so he's trying to back you up from reaching your goal. Uh, but I thank God that the Hill City Saints uh, and the people all over the world, we're known for our defense. Uh, our defense says that no weapon uh, that is formed against us. Uh, it won't even be able to prosper. Uh, do I have a church up here? Shout hallelujah. Uh, my defense says to put on the whole armor of God uh, that I may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, I got my helmet of salvation. Uh, I got my breastplate of righteousness. Come on. I got my loins girt about with truth. Uh, I have my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Come on. Uh, I got the word of God which is the sword of the spirit uh, I'm ready for battle come on uh, he didn't put you he didn't give you any warfare uh, armor armor for your back because you got somebody that's gonna back you up come on uh, God said you gotta back each other up uh, you are a team come on somebody uh, get up and tell somebody we're a team we're 
we're a team, we're a team. And tell them, I got your back. If you uh, Don't say it if you don't mean it. Go to somebody else and tell them, I got your back. When the enemy coming at you, I'm going to pray for you. Come on, you just need to pray for somebody. Touch them and say, I got you. Tell them, I got you covered. They may be talking about you, but I got you. They may be talking about you on Facebook and Twitter, but I got you. They be running you down in the vlogs and everything, but I got you. Do anybody know that you got a brother and sister that's going to cover you? I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of brother that will fight. I don't care how big the enemy is. I'll be the first one swinging on the enemy. Do I have anybody that's bold enough to be the first one to swing up on that devil? I need somebody that know the anointing on your life and get up and give God a crazy warfare cry right there. Ah, you must understand that every time a soul is saved, heaven goes crazy. The Bible says that heaven rejoices over just one soul. But every time we lose a soul, the Bible says that hell enlarges itself. It's opening up wider to receive people to go to hell. But not on our watch. Come on, somebody. We're going to win as many souls. Come on. We're crazy enough to believe that we can win a billion people in our lifetime. I need some crazy people like your pastor. If you're crazy enough to believe that you can win a billion people, you get up and you give God a shout, a praise on that. Uh, somebody needs to do the Michael Jackson, do something, uh, because God's going to do it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, so you must understand, you must understand. Watch this church, we, I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, but don't even look at the score right now. Don't you fix your eyes on the score because the score will disappoint you. People are busy doing everything else but winning the souls and time is winding up every day. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Come on, somebody. We got North Korea trying to drop bombs on us right now. If you don't feel the urgency to get in God's presence and win a soul, something is wrong with you. But I believe there's some people that's alert and they're sober and they can see what the enemy it's trying to do but don't you look at the score because the enemy looks like he's winning on the scoreboard come on I don't hear nobody saying nothing because he found a way to influence this generation and make sin a normal thing he found a way to control the media and push his agenda y'all better talk back to me because I'm, I'm about to run around this whole church he found a way to destroy homes and break up marriages and break up families and turn brother against brother and sister against sister we're losing on the scoreboard you better hear what I'm saying he found a way to take prayer out of the schools and he replaced it with suicide and bullying and mass murderers and he took the prayer out come on somebody but I hear the Lord said I'm counting on somebody I'm counting on the hill city saints to go out are y'all in the house I'm counting on somebody that know how to get on their face and call on the name of Jesus. I'm counting on somebody that won't be moved by the warfare that will keep on fighting. He said, I'm counting on somebody that won't give up when they get tired. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Is that you in here? Tell them God is counting on you. Tell three people around and tell them you got to get up because God is counting on you. They still sit down. They look at me like I'm crazy, but I said, get up. It's time for you to hit the street. It's time for you to go the highways and byways. It's time for you to go up in the schools. It's time for you to go up in the corners. Black Lives Matter can march in the streets. God said, I'm looking for my church to march in the street. Somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Why are we losing on the scoreboard? Why are we losing when we are a powerful church? Why are we losing when we serve a powerful God? Why are we losing when the fight is already fixed why are you losing when he already paid the price for us on Calvary why are you losing come on somebody there's many reasons why we should be why we are losing one thing I got to deal with and I'm gonna let you go I'm gonna take you here and I'll let you go but there are many reasons but one thing that I have to speak the Holy Ghost told me to speak in here that people forget glory to God people have become unteachable in the church and uncoachable in the church I don't hear nobody saying nothing we don't like rules and regulations we want to do whatever we want to do we don't want nobody to 
tell us nothing. Come on, somebody. Huh? We don't like, but come on, there is an order when it comes to this team. Come on, somebody. Huh? Everybody can't take the basket at one time. Huh? Somebody got to be somewhere to defend the brother while he's trying to make the basket. Huh? I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Huh? Everybody can't have the ball in their hand. Huh? Only one person at a time could have the ball. Come on, somebody. Give me that ball back. One turn, person at a time. Come on, come on. One person. Come on, somebody. Huh? Shout hallelujah up in here. Huh? But we got people that it feels like because they are anointed. Huh? Amen. That rules don't abide. Come on. Don't concern them. Huh? They're talking about practice. Huh? What do you mean practice? Remind me of Allen Iverson. He, he said, I don't need to practice. Huh? I'm the baddest one around here. Huh? The devil is alive. You ain't all that bad. Huh? I don't hear nobody saying nothing now. Huh? The Bible says the man should not think more highly of himself than he ought. Huh? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Huh? The people that think they're big and bad, they really ain't all that. Huh? Without God, you ain't nothing. Huh? I, uh, uh, tell somebody to act like they didn't hear that. Huh? Tell them without God, huh? you ain't nothing. Huh? Without God, you ain't nothing. Huh? Turn around and tell your other neighbor, tell them without God, huh? you ain't nothing. Huh? It's God that's brought you thus far. Huh? It is God that brought you over. Huh? It is God that you can lift your hands. Huh? It is God that you can drive the car you have. Huh? It is God that you can live in the house you live in. Huh? It's the God. Come on somebody. Huh? Without God huh? you are nothing. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah up in here. Huh? Shout hallelujah. Huh? I hear the Lord saying that right now some folk need to be benched. Huh? Come on somebody. Somebody, huh, because they're getting beside themselves. Huh, come on, sit down on that bench. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Huh, somebody need a time out. Because huh, the show, they think the show is ran with them. Huh, but God said, one monkey don't stop no show. Huh, this is my church. Huh, and heaven and earth will pass away. Huh, but my church huh, will stand forever. Huh, somebody scream in your neighbor's face right there. Listen, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But then we have another problem. We have people that don't trust the coach. I ain't going to get no amens right there. We got people that want to upstage the coach. Uh, talk to me, church. How can you have a coach that you do not trust? How can you serve a God that you do not trust? What's happening here is we have unbelieving believers. We, uh, come, talk back to me now. We have unbelieving believers. Amen. You don't believe what you pray about. You don't believe the word that God has spoken of your life. But the ones that's going to reach the goal, come on somebody, are people that will stand on God's word in spite of what they feel like. Come on, they're not moved by their emotions. They're not moved by, come on, their feelings. But they stand on the principles of the word of God. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah up in here. Come on, shout hallelujah. See, you need it's better to trust God because God knows better than you. He sees everything. He has an overall vision of what's going on in your life. So you need to trust God. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. He knows the way that you should take. So stop fighting up against God when God knows better for you. God wants better for you than you want for yourself. And he's already been better to you than you've been to yourself. Do I have a real church up in here? Shout hallelujah up in here. Shout glory up in here. Here's one more thing and I'm going to get you up out of here. God says stop changing the plays. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Stop changing the plays. What God give you, the strategy he gives you, you stick with the play. Even when, come on, when you ain't got folk watching you, you stick to the play. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. You ain't got nobody looking over your shoulder trying to make sure you're doing the right thing. Stick to the play. God is counting on you not to get on the court and get on the life field, the battlefield, and change up and switch up everything that he told you. You got to stick with what God told you. Look at somebody and be, don't, don't be bold about it. Tell them you got to stick with it. You're moving too much. Oh, there's a word right there. You're moving too much. You're moving so much, God can't move for you. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. You got to be planted 
every time you're looking around you go into all kinds of churches you're doing all kinds of things but the Lord said I want to settle you and I want to establish you come on somebody and don't change up the play because you need to know that you serve a God that won't change his mind people change their mind people are wishy-washy but the God you serve is rock solid what he says I wish I had a crazy church up in here has God been rock solid in your life if he's been rock solid in your life you ought to get up and praise him right there you don't even need no music give God a shout right there ah. I hear the Lord saying, can we have church in here? Can we have church in here? I hear the Lord saying that the ball is in your court. Yes. He said, I've given you everything you need to reach your goal. But the ball is in your court. He said, I can't make you do my will. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. My will has got to be in your heart. My will has got to be in your soul. Look at your neighbor and tell him the ball is in your court. What you going to do with it? Shannon, catch this ball. The ball is in your court. You need to pass the ball to somebody else. Tell them the ball is in your court. Tell your neighbor, catch this ball. It's in your court. Come on, somebody. Success is in your hands. It's already in your hands. Deborah, catch this ball. It's in your, that's right. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. The ball is in your hands. God wants you to keep on pressing until you reach your goal. Should they catch this ball? It's in your hands. I wish I had a church in here. But don't you keep that anointing to yourself. Pass that ball around. I wish I had a church in here. Pass that ball around. Yeah. Catch the ball. Don't you drop the ball now. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't drop the ball. You got to be a team player. I wish I had a church in here. You got to be a team player. You got to come on, somebody. Give God praise. If you're going to be a team player, say yes in here. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Listen, church, I gotta, I'm about to tell you something. Who can play basketball? Make this shot for me. Who can make this? No, no joy. You know you can't make no shot. Listen, I need somebody that's gonna make this shot. No hitting nobody upside the head with it. Listen. <laughs> but I wanna, but oh, quickly, quickly, I wanna tell you a story about a man named Elijah. He had a great anointing on him. He had a power that was in him. He had the ability to call down fire from heaven. It was something about when Elijah spoke, God answered his word. God would not allow Elijah's word to go to the ground, everything he said. And he had a great victory. Well, he did it by himself. He didn't have a team with him. He did it by himself. Come on, somebody. He did it by himself. But there was one battle that he could not do by himself. He got a word that Jezebel said, I'm coming for your head. You think you all that? You think you can sing all that stuff? I'm coming for your head. You must understand when you have a great anointing on you, there is an enemy, there is a warfare that's coming your way. Come on, but lift your hand and say, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. But one thing, he ran for his life. 
he got weary and he got tired and ran for his life. He ran to a cave and said, I quit. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of always being the one to have to keep pressing through. It seemed like my team ain't giving the same effort that I'm giving. Has anybody ever felt that way up in here? It seemed like I'm giving 110%. Come on, somebody. I'm giving 110%, but my team is barely doing it. That's because somebody's looking at the score. Somebody's on the bench looking at the score and getting discouraged. Have you ever seen a team on when they're playing a team and they're down 25? The whole team looking at each other and saying, what's wrong? Is it me? What's going on? I don't know why we're down 25. Should I give up? I'm tired. There are people right now that are downtrodden because they've been looking at the score in their life. It seems like every, on every side you're losing on every side. But I come to tell somebody that if you just keep on pressing in, victory is coming your way. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. He said, you got to keep on praising me. Don't even have the look of defeat on your face. I need somebody to get out of your seat right now and begin to walk right now in the name of Jesus and tell yourself that I am not a quitter. I'm a winner. I am not a quitter. There is no quit in my spirit. I refuse to give up. I've come too far to give up now. I've come too far to doubt God now. I've come too far to let the enemy look. Come on, somebody. I've been fighting too long to get to the championship and let the enemy steal my victory. Somebody need to get up off the bench. Get up and get your head in the game. Get your spirit in the game. Get your spirit 